day two, Wednesday, I think. Uh, we're heading up to uh, Chom. Chom? Chom. Well, you'll see. And now we're going to check out uh, Pol Pot's Ashes. And uh, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, I guess. Plus, uh, just show you this. Here's the lake. And there we got the lake here. It's not too full of much water, but uh, you can see, if you can see those hills in the uh, the background there, well, that's Thailand. But yeah, we're heading out there at about 18 kilometers and uh, we'll see what it looks like up on the, uh, the border town. Well, I can't remember the name of this pass, but uh, I thought this was a little further up north. But apparently, these hills, not quite Thailand yet, right on the other side should be. Uh, let me get up and around there, and I should be in Chao Am, and that's right on, right on the border. So. All right, here we go, up the mountain, or hill. I don't know, what do you think? Leave me a comment down below. Is that a mountain or is that a hill? Depends on if you're an ant or an elephant, right? Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, well, we reached the end of the line. Here is the international border. Uh, it's Cho Am International Border. There's the border people over there and you just can't like easily get through there. But what one thing I do want to say is about oh maybe six or seven kilometers that away is the nearest 7-Eleven. And oh man, what I would give for a ham and cheese toasty. Don't judge me. If you know, you know. Not too decorated, not too fancy. I didn't expect it to be uh, fancy at all. Um, I don't think he was too well loved of a man. Okay, just shy of the uh, Cho Am uh, international border to uh, Saran, uh, Thailand, uh, is the uh, is where they have the uh, the ashes to pull pot. Two dollars to come in and check it out, and um, it's really not too much of a ceremonial place which i really didn't think it was going to be uh since how he wasn't really well loved um for you younger folks um pull pot was not a nice guy um uh, back after right after the vietnam war uh yeah uh, some uh some communist uh, people with uh, some really crazy ideas uh took over um cambodia and within three or four years, uh, three and a half, four years, something like that, uh, they basically uh, murdered 25% of the population. Uh, Pol Pot's idea was uh, a very far left uh, communist idea. He wanted to turn Cambodia into uh, nothing but an agrarian community. Uh, so it could be like the rice basket of Southeast Asia. I don't know what, what the, but anybody that was educated could read, even had glasses, doctors, lawyers, anybody that, that was anywhere that had formal training um, was um, suspect and basically tortured and killed, even, even friggin' babies. Uh, but that's another story if you go down to uh, like the killing fields. Uh, but uh, this is where the, uh, he ended up at. So let's go take a look at that. It's not too much of a, you know, it's not too decorated or anything. So let's take a look. Okay, well, that's where his ashes are at, I guess. Okay. And uh, as you can see, a uh, tin roof over it. Not too um, ceremonial. Uh, Kidoki. Well, that's it there. That's what I came. 170 kilometers to see. <laughs> well, no, that and other things. Um, that and other things. Is that, a, is that a termite mound growing on top of it? Hmm. 
interesting or a big wasp nest or something how fitting if you want to consider it that and then i asked the uh, the older gentleman that was taking my two dollars to go check it out uh i said is pull pot good or bad and he told me good so i guess yeah i guess i don't know what to guess you got the epitome of capitalism there and uh back over there you would have the epitome of uh communism so what a dichotomy okay i looked the word up gosh guys man just be nice to me coming up soon you'll be seeing a lot of spirit houses and shrines I guess it's from you know people who have unfortunately lost their their lives on this uh, mountain it's unfortunate I like to call it a mountain because it just sounds cool but it's really just a hill ish mountain <laughs> beautiful view there pretty flat around here I guess you head east a little bit northeast of Cambodia it gets hilly and also down in the southwest got some hills and mountains I guess I haven't made it there yet not sure if I'm gonna make it on this trip but well we'll see Oh, stop and get a, a coffee. I think I want to try to try this coconut coffee. You know, that sounds like a good one. That was about the only one that we can communicate because I don't get internet here and I cannot download the Khmer language on Google Translate. Many, many other you can. Thai you can, but um, not, not Khmer. Okay, I've got two stories I want to tell you. Uh, I'm going to tell you one of them right now. Uh, that gal that made uh, my delicious coconut co iced coffee was, uh, she did speak English and she also uh, sp spoke Thai because when she gave me um, my coffee, because well, she knew I knew a little bit of Thai, uh, but anyways, uh, she, she said, um, which is, which is, Thai and I'm going oh you know how to speak Thai where'd you learn how to speak Thai and she like rolled her eyes and pointed down the road that I came from you know the border oh uh, okay the border was only a couple of miles away <laughs> but anyways I thought that was uh, kind of a, a funny little say had it been there okay all right, all right just, just leave me alone uh, but yes yes uh, coming into and long wing was I guess is the proper way of saying it. I've been saying it wrong all the time, but here we go. Yes, a roundabout. Okay, the next story here real quick is, uh, actually, it happens in the future. It happens tonight, not, not during this daytime. But uh, anyways, I was walking back uh, from dinner, and there was uh, some gals uh, by a, a little place that sells uh, some, some meat on a stick. Anyways, they said, where are you from? I said, I said, USA. And they go, oh, USA, we like USA. And I turn around, and it just all happened really fast. I turn around, and it startled me because it was this... this gal standing right like like 10 inches from my face and it startled me because she was almost as tall as me but without any emotion on her face at all she looked at me and this all happened like within a second or two she goes i love you <laughs> okay i know you had to been there but anyways yeah it's an interesting town a bit rustic away from every everything it's I don't know about 150 kilometers uh, north of, of uh, Siam Reap where I'm currently living at 
And it's kind of the slow time of the day, I think. And people are not out and about. At five o'clock, it gets real busy. Uh, well, I just finished my walk and uh, stopped and had a, a lunch. Found out that I think I'm going to be stopping by there for supper because they do cheeseburgers. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to go and take a break. Probably hop in the shower because it's been hot and I was walking around for a long time. But I do have some place i got to be at, uh, at 5 o'clock. And uh, it's a surprise. It's a surprise to me. And uh, so I want to bring you guys along and I hope it's a surprise for you too. Got quite a few motorbikes here. These are, I think, middle school and maybe some high schoolers that come afterwards for the English classes. Yeah, okay. Up to you, yes. Slang words. Does everybody know what slang is? Can someone tell me what slang is? Okay, slang, if you have, you have like on the Kamai, you have proper Kamai, and then you have everyday Kamai, like you talk to your friends. But if you're talked to the headmaster, the teacher, something you teach, you talk, you know, you don't, you don't say slang. No, I got two slang words I like. My favorite. You see them in movies too from Hollywood. Okay, the first one, this is this is what you say what's happening, right? You all know how to ask a person, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? You can shorten that down like when you're talking to your mom or dad, somebody important at the police house. What's happening? This is proper, but if you're talking to your friends, your coworkers, or your cook, or anybody like that, then you can say it in a slang fashion. And that is saying Japanese. 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 Have anybody heard that before? I've done any English, any Hollywood movies or something. Japanese. Okay, Mr. Kelly, I want you to explain the sentence correctly about all the students here. What does it mean? And when do we use this sentence for uh, someone or some friend or some, um, some, uh, someone else? Okay, okay, like what's happening, that's of course when you're talking to your teacher, headmaster, mom and dad, your parents, your yeah. friends, that's what's happening. Yeah. Okay, so when you say what's happening, but if you just walking up to uh, your friends and they're sitting around uh, at lunchtime or something and you know you can say what's happening or you can say slang and you can say happening yeah that is that is what we call slang slang well, I just had my dinner and I'm heading back to uh, the, the homestay or the whatever they call it a homestay. Yeah, I guess it's a homestay. Boy, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm beat. I'm kind of looking forward to getting back to uh, my apartment in Siem Reap. Uh, but it was a lot of fun coming out here and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to do it again, but well, not this town, but. I think karate might be uh, next, but that'll be uh, that'll be like a four or five day or I believe. But we'll just have to find out. So, anyways, if you're still here, you're my number one fans, and thank you a lot, and uh, really means a lot to me. Yeah, you all have a great day. <laughs>